no one had arrived yet when Toto Chan got to the door of the railroad car classroom. Toto Chan's heart was beating fast with excitement as she peeped inside. Oh, studying here would be like going on a perpetual journey. The windows still had baggage racks above them. The only difference was that there was a blackboard in the front of the car and the lengthwise seats had been replaced by school desks and chairs all facing forward. I am so happy, she finally said out loud. Just at that moment, someone got in. It was a girl. She took her notebook and pencil box out of her school bag and put them on her desk. Then she stood on tiptoe and put the bag on the rack. Toto Chan quickly did the same. Eventually, there were nine pupils in the car. This comprised the first grade at Tome Gakun. They would be traveling together on the same train. Going to school in a railroad car seemed unusual enough, but the seating arrangements turned out to be unusual too. At the other school, each pupil was assigned a specific desk, but here they were allowed to sit anywhere they liked at any time. The most unusual thing of all about this school, however, were the lessons themselves. Schools normally scheduled one subject, for example, Japanese, the first period, then say, arithmetic, the second period, when you just did arithmetic. But here it was quite different. At the beginning of the first period, the teacher made a list of all the problems and questions in the subjects to be studied that day. Then she would say, now start with any of these you like. So whether you started on Japanese or arithmetic or something else didn't matter at all. Someone who liked composition might be interested in writing something, while behind you someone who liked physics might be boiling something in a flask over a burner. So that a small explosion was liable to occur in any of the classrooms. After the lessons, it was time for something from the oceans and something from the hills. The lunch hour Toto Chan had looked forward to so eagerly. The headmaster had adopted the phrase to describe a balanced meal, the kind of food he expected you to bring for lunch in addition to your rice. Instead of the unusual train your child to eat everything approach, the headmaster asked the parents to include in their lunch boxes something from the oceans and something from the hills. Something from the ocean meant seafood, things such as fish and sukada ni, tiny crustaceans boiled in soy sauce and sweet sake, while something from the hills meant food from the land like vegetables and meat. The headmaster came to look in all the lunch boxes. Toto Chan had doubts about whether her lunch would be approved. But when she opened the lunchbox, she found such a marvelous lunch inside. It was all she could do to stop herself shouting, Oh, goody, goody! Her lunch contained bright yellow scrambled eggs, green peas, brown denbu, and pink naked quadroy. It was as colorful as a new garden. Oh, very pretty. Then, he pointed to the denbu. What's this? Is it from the ocean or from the hills? I don't know, she said. No one else seemed to know either. All right, I'll tell you. Denbu is from the ocean, said the headmaster. It is made by scrapping the flesh of cooked fish and lightly roasting and crushing it into fine pieces, which are then dried and flavored. Oh, said the children, impressed. Then someone asked if they could see Toto Chan's Denbu. Certainly, said the headmaster, and the whole school trooped over to see Toto Chan's Denbu. After lunch, Toto Chan played in the school grounds with the others before returning to the classroom where the teacher was waiting for them. You all worked hard this morning, she said. So, 
What would you like to do this afternoon? There was a unanimous shout. A walk! All right, said the teacher. And the children all began rushing to the doors. Toto Chan was used to going for walks with Daddy, but she had never heard of a school walk. She was astounded. Apparently, if you worked hard in the morning and completed all the tasks the teacher had given you, you were allowed to go for a walk in the afternoon. This was the same for the whole school. Out of the gate they went and began walking along beside a stream. The children chatted away about anything they liked. The sky was blue and the air was filled with the fluttering of butterflies. After they had been walking for about 10 minutes, the teacher stopped. She pointed to some yellow flowers and said, Look at these mustard flowers. Do you know why flowers blue? She examined about pistols and stamens while the children crouched by the road and examined the flowers. The teacher told them how butterflies helped flowers to bloom. And indeed, the butterflies seemed very busy helping. And so the afternoon progressed. The children strolled around a pond, calling out, Hello! to people in the rowboats. And they played hopscotch to their heart's content. Everything was new to Toto-chan, and she greeted each discovery with an excited shout. Time to go back, said the teacher, as the sun began to dip and the children set off for the school. Little did the children realize then that these walks, a time of freedom and play for them, were in reality precious lessons in science, history and biology. Toto-chan had already made friends with all the children and felt she had known them all her life. Let's go for a walk again tomorrow, she shouted to them. Yes, let's, they shouted back, hopping and skipping. The butterflies were still going busily about their businesses and the song of birds filled the air. Toto-chan's heart was bursting with joy.